Hey, so uh, random, I know, but I think I've worked up a really good and replicable procedure for converting a cheap terracotta pot and an expensive aquarium light into a very, very stable light platform or light table or kind of light column. And you can put any kind of liquid on there. I built it for this uh, drink dispenser that I have converted into a, uh, a fish bowl for the baby rice fish that I have been breeding in here. But you could use it for food stuff. You could use it for a, a punch bowl for a party or something like that. It'd be a great gimmick. Um, you could also be useful, I don't know, maybe in like theater arts or something like that. I don't know. I'm just throwing this out there in case anybody wants it. The best thing, in my opinion, is that because it's an aquarium light, it's programmable. So you can change the color, you can change like the daily schedule that it goes on. I can have it go off at night to prevent algae growth. So the light that I'm using here is the Fluval Nano, hashtag not an ad, but it's a great little light. I've used it for a whole bunch of things. Like any other very powerful light, even an LED light, it gets hot. Not super hot, but hot. So we gotta work with materials that are heat tolerant, hence the terracotta, terracotta base that's going to protect the table. First thing I'm gonna do is just wrap the light up in saran wrap just to protect it over the course of making this. And if you look to the side, there's this little notch where some of our filler could kind of flow in and lock the light in place, that's bad. So we need a kind of a dummy material to take up that space as we mold around it. And for that purposes, I'm using some of my kids' old Play-Doh. Just jam it in there, that's gonna be just fine. And we're gonna use this for some other stuff. First thing you'll need is a terracotta pot that is wide enough to accommodate the entire bottom surface of the light so that it can lie flat on the bottom. For these purposes, I really like these what they call jar style pots because they are kind of short and squat, uh, which means really stable. And we're gonna be putting really heavy things of water on top of this, it needs to be stable. Make sure you get a saucer or whatever they call it for the pots. We're gonna need that too. It's gotta fit. And both making this and using it will go a lot easier if you put a, a little bit of self-leveling mat on the bottom of the saucer. Uh, Self-leveling mat is not something you can just buy in any store, but you can buy a yoga mat in almost any store, a kind of squishy one that you sort of sink into when you squeeze on it. That's great for a self-leveling mat. Thanks to Kenny at Aquatic Marine, the fish shop in North Knoxville, Tennessee for that tip. Just trace the base, cut it out, maybe cut a little bit smaller so that we don't really see it under there. It's not gonna be pretty. And then just glue that on with any super glue should take care of it. Okay, time to deal with the bottom of the pot itself. Here, I'm tracing the outline of this light just so you can visualize how this is gonna work. You don't actually need to trace this for your own purposes. Oh, and note that at the back of the light, we have these ventilation holes. We're gonna need to preserve an airspace around these so that it can vent out the heat and the light doesn't melt itself. So we'll just uh, cut out around here for sure. Then we gotta do is kind of punch the bottom out of this pot. And for that, a civilized person would use an angle grinder or something, but uh, you can't just use a hammer. Take a hammer, go to the opening, and you just kind of tap and just kind of pretend like you're like a 12th century mason working on a cathedral or something. Just a teeny little bit at a time, be patient, and you'll be able to cut out pretty much anything you want from thin terracotta. If you try to take off too much at once, you're gonna get a crack that's gonna go right down the side of the thing. Don't ask me how I know that. Well, ask me how I know that. You wanna see all of my failed prototypes? At this point, you're probably thinking, this is nuts. Adam, this video is nuts.com. No, actually, the sponsor is nuts.com. Nuts.com is a family-owned business that's been around for almost a century, under different names, of course. Didn't have the internet back then. And it is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruit, sweets, pantry staples like specialty flowers, and more. And they have like candies and chocolates and protein powders and stuff. It's kind of uh, lots of energy dense foods, things that are good for hiking. What I love about nuts.com is the focus on quality. They roast their nuts and they pop their corn the same day that everything ships. So everything reaches you really fresh and freshly roasted nuts are special. And these are the best cashews I've ever had in my life. And I keep a bag of them out here in the greenhouse for when I'm tinkering around. It's just a great thing to be able to reach for. Mm. Right now, nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more. That's at nuts.com slash Adam Ragusea. So go check out all the delicious options at nuts.com slash Adam Ragusea. You'll get a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders over $29. Nuts.com slash Adam Ragusea. Thank you, nuts.com. Then it's time to start assembling. Take a bit of saran wrap and line the uh, saucer here just so that nothing sticks to it. Light goes on top with its Play-Doh little bits. Place the pot around it, and then we're gonna need to put in some Play-Doh around that airspace where the ventilation is so that nothing flows in there. This is gonna be a hollow later. We'll take the Play-Doh out. Then what we need is a heat tolerant material to 
fill up the bulk of this space, something that is both cheap and light so that this isn't super heavy. And for that, expanding foam is incredible, the heat tolerant kind. First thing I'm gonna do is kind of spray around that edge. We wanna kind of seal up the very bottom of the pot. Do not put any material on the actual LED light surface yet, but go ahead and spray around it. Think about getting this watertight. It needs to be watertight because we're gonna pour some liquids in here later. And if we make it watertight, it'll be light tight. We won't get light spilling out. Notice no spillage. Just seal off the bottom there initially and just get that drying. That's the most important part of the foam. And if you spray foam too thick, uh, it just doesn't cure on the inside. So we're gonna go ahead and just do a little bit now, let it start drying while we do other stuff. We'll need something to channel the light up through the pot and it needs to be heat tolerant, so PVC pipe. Just lay it down there on the face of the light and make a little mark at the very top, then go back two inches from that mark and saw. It does not have to be a pretty cut, it just has to be reasonably flat. The reason that we went down two inches is that we want the top two inches of this to be epoxy resin. That is the transparent substance on top that is going to support all of the weight. Two inches is a good thickness for epoxy resin. Super strong, but not so thick that it will take a long time to cure. All right, so we take the flatter store cut side of the PVC and then I'm going to top it with some kind of transparent oculus. Uh, saran wrap is just fine. A few layers wrapped around each other just to make sure it's super strong. And then I'm just gonna tie that off with like a hair tie. Good enough. Time now to simply fill up the rest of this thing with foam all the way up to the top of the Oculus. This is just an inexpensive filler that is going to hold everything in place. It's gonna maintain a light tight seal. It, remember not to go all the way to the top. They call it expanding foam for a reason. It expands as it dries, not just as it comes out of the can. Here we are the next day and you can see that I sprayed in too much, but that's fine. You can just cut it away with any knife. I also had a little bit of foam intrusion into my saran wrap. That's fine. I just took it off and replaced it. It was easy. Now at this stage, I want to get everything cut reasonably level because I'm going to pour the epoxy on top and epoxy comes out better if you pour it in a really even layer. Now what I'm going to do is take some heat tolerant black silicone sealer and just paint the very top of this. This layer is doing a few things for us. One, it is leveling everything out for the aforementioned reasons. Two, it's forming a watertight seal so that epoxy resin won't leak through the entire pot as it is curing. And thirdly, it is black, so it's going to uh, focus the light and keep the light reasonably pure in color. You wanna let that silicone cure pretty solid before you pour the epoxy on it. Remember, epoxy resin gets hot as it cures and it could melt the silicone. So here is the resin, epoxy resin. It's basically plexiglass in a bottle. There's the resin and then there's the hardener. With this brand, you're supposed to mix equal quantities. It, resin people, and there are resin people on YouTube, believe me, um, I'm not doing your whole thing here. I know you guys have all kinds of methods for mixing it so that you'll get bubbles in it, and uh, it doesn't matter. Bubbles are fine for me. Stir it per the instructions, and then you just pour it right on top. I'm gonna go almost to the top, but not quite for two reasons. One, some epoxies will expand a little bit as they cure and we don't want to spill over. And two, I would like a nice protective lip on the top there. And as you can see, one of the advantages of building this up with the pipe and the foam is that we only need a little bit of resin and resin is super expensive. This is $60 worth of resin. Now, one trick I did learn from you epoxy people on YouTube is to like wait 20 minutes until the epoxy starts to kind of firm up a little bit and then you just hit it with a very low powered hair dryer. You don't want to hit it with a high powered hair dryer or it'll slosh around, just a low powered hair dryer. And they do this to kind of pop some bubbles. I'm not really popping the bubbles. What I'm more doing is trying to corral the bubbles into the center over the oculus where they will function as a diffuser basically, just kind of soften the light that comes out of this. I don't want to see the individual LED bulbs shining through and reflecting in my fish or my punch. The next day the epoxy is hard, but it really needs a few days to set up really hard to the point where it can support a lot of weight without deforming. A couple days later, open it up, unwrap everything. We can uh, pull the Play-Doh out of those dead spaces. And if there's any uh, foam that got in places it shouldn't go, you can just cut it out, it's fine. Oh, and this is not necessary. I wanted to make a no power tools procedure, but if you have like a drill with a half inch or so masonry bit on it, something that's wide enough for the power cable to fit through, I might just kind of do a little hole right there in the side of the saucer just so that I can get the power cable kind of out of the way. Now to further minimize light leakage, we can actually just kind of wrap this in a little bit of foil. The foil is heat conductive. It'll conduct heat from that heat exchange plate on the top of the light into the, uh, the ceramic of the saucer, which is a good place for that heat to go. Assemble everything in your whole stack and there you go. Could be useful for serving all kinds of neat bits of food. But of course, uh, I mostly am making it for my uh, fish thing here. What am I doing with this? Well, with rice fish in the morning, you can uh, spot some eggs on the pelvic fin area of the fish and you can just uh, grab the fish and 
take the eggs right off. They stick to your finger. And I've been doing that and putting them into a little fish bowl and the eggs have been hatching and it's been a lot of fun, but they're gonna need some more space to kind of grow up. So I got them this thing and it's just a drink dispenser. Why a drink dispenser? Because it has a little font on it on the bottom, which makes it really easy for water changes. All I have to do is just kind of pull on the little fountain and then out comes the old water. I put new water on top. Oh, and I know what you're thinking. I took a little bit of filter floss and I put it onto the inside of that little valve there so that uh, baby fish won't come out. Now, please do keep in mind that this is one man's DIY craft, not an actual like product or anything. It has not been rated for fire safety by underwriters labs or anything. I think it's safe, but I'm not sure. And I'm going to be watching mine closely for a while to make sure no parts of it get too hot. Do whatever you do at your own risk. I hope I gave you some ideas to get started. Perhaps I made a little light go off in your head. Yeah. <laughs>